In this video, we're going to cover how to hand sew on buttons, hooks and eyes, and other closures, and the tools that we need to do that. Join me and let's get started. So if we take a look at the table, we've got a couple different things. We have our buttons, a regular shirt button with four holes that will be sewn flat to the garment, and then two different types of shank buttons. Shanks sit just above the fabric and have a post. This is a traditional shank and this is a cloth shank, typically used on just bridal decorative buttons. We also have our scissors and we've got our needles. The needles I like to use for typical hand sewing are sharps and this size five is a nice middle of the road size, right length, good width. Then we have our hand sewing thread. Waxed skein comes in packages in different colors. It is pre-cut, pre-measured, and pre-waxed, and it's perfect for quickly sewing on any type of closure. Let's get started. So we've got our needle here, and we're gonna pull out two strands from our pack of skein. When we double that over through the needle eye, that'll be four threads. So let's hold this just there and slide those right on and pull the thread so that all four threads are even. We're gonna match up the ends and then we're gonna take all four threads, roll them together in our fingers, loop it around our index finger and roll it off, pulling it tight with our, with our fingernail. This creates a big nasty knot that we call a waist knot. It's good and strong and going to be hidden, so don't worry about what it looks like. Trim off a little bit of the extra and we'll move over to our fabric. Our sample here is two layers of cotton. We are going to be looking at the right side of the fabric, the correct side of the garment, and we're going to go straight through. This will place our not on the correct side of the garment. Don't worry, we're gonna cover that with our button. We're gonna flip over and take a look at where we are on the back and try to bring our needle up just to the side of where we brought it through. Our goal on the back side of the garment or the inside of the garment is to keep all of our stitching as tight and close to itself as possible to keep it looking nice and clean. We don't want a bunch of stitches all spread out. We want them nice and tight. So we're gonna bring that needle up just next to our knot. And now we are ready to put on our button. I like to use this thumb to hold the button in place right over top because it also keeps the threads tight as I'm pulling them through. Now, with a four hole button, we have two options. We can either go thread across from each other or directly next to each other. The rule of thumb is that we want to do whatever was originally done. So we're going to cross over. We're going to come up through our hole and go directly across and back down through the garment, holding everything in place with that thumb and the fingers underneath. There we go. Gently pulling tight to make sure that we don't have any loose loops. Remember, we've got four threads. So we want to make sure that they're all being pulled tight together. Let's take a look at the other side. Good, we're nice and close to that original stitch. And again, we're going to push through and we're kind of feeling with the needle here until we find a hole and coming back up through again. We're going to do two rounds on the first two holes, which is eight threads and two rounds through the second two holes. So now we're going to feel around, yes, for the other hole. There we go. Holding everything in place from both sides. Oop. Good. And one more time. We're coming up through, but on this last thread, we're going to let the needle come out to the side not through the fabric and not down onto the other side of the garment because to give this button a little extra strength, if it's a shirt button, it's being used frequently on the front of the shirt. We're gonna pull this thread tight and loop it around that thread base under the button just once. Then 
we're ready to knot off. So we're gonna to look to the side, pull our needle through those threads coming up until there's a little loop. All four threads, make sure they're all balanced in the same length, and then just pull our needle through. One knot, and let's do a second knot for safety. Good. Pull slowly to make sure that all of those threads stay even with each other. And then, if the garment has two layers or more, we're going to slide our needle through, making sure that it is not showing on the other side, and hide our thread tails right there in the garment. That's where they're gonna live. This allows us to keep from cutting, trimming the thread really close to that knot and making that weaker. And then we're just gonna snip it right there. And we've got our button. Okay, next we're gonna sew on our shank button. Now keep in mind, we are using a different colored thread so that it's easier to see, but typically we want to match the garment so that it looks nice and professional. Again, we're gonna do our waist knot, rolling the thread around the index finger and sliding it off, pulling tight and trimming any little bit of extra. Perfect. Again, we're gonna start on the correct side of the garment, thread the needle through, and right next to it, back up through again. All right, now we're ready for the button. The shank button is a little bit harder to hold onto place. We're still gonna use that thumb for the first few rounds, and don't worry about having to get it too tight in the beginning because it's a little hard to get it to stand upright. So we're gonna go straight through and aim to bring the needle down directly where our knot was. And then using the previous thread as our guide, we're coming up to the side. And this is when we can start to tighten up that thread around that shank. And you see, as I pull the button back, that we're just threading straight through and back down, trying to keep all of the stitching in the exact same location. Again, we're using four threads, so three times through should do the trick. On this third time, we're bringing the needle through, but we are not gonna go back down through the garment. We're just gonna go through the other threads and we wanna do this because we're going to do a little thread shank to tighten this up. We're gonna hold the button in place and wrap just around the bottom underneath the shank. This is giving the thread a little bit of support there and it's gonna help that shank button stand straight up. And now we're gonna knot through our stitching again pulling the loops, the four loops tight, one knot, and a second knot. I'm using my needle as my tool, you can see, making sure that I'm keeping all of those threads straight and pushing them where I want them to go. Perfect. And now we're ready to hide those thread tails again in between the layers of fabric, and then just trim that right off. So now, when we set that down, see how that button stands straight up like that? That's exactly what we want. Next, let's take a look at our two most traditional hooks and eyes and hooks and bars. Okay, so we've got a little sample fabric here that's meant to look like the closure of a garment. And we've got our hook and eye and our hook and bar. These are the two most traditional closures we're gonna use other than buttons. Let's start with the hook and eye. So we're gonna take one side of our pretend garment. We're gonna start from the inside of the garment to hide our knot. We're not gonna hide it on the front this time because the hook and eyes are see-through, so we won't be able to hide it. We're gonna hold either the hook or eye on with our thumb, just like with the button. And we're gonna come up under one side of the hook. 
two loops around, again, is eight threads and plenty enough to hold it in place. So we'll go one, two, and it's okay if that catches on the inside of the garment, that just keeps it strong. We'll shift the garment around and loop through the other side. Again, still holding the hook with our thumb. One and two. Finally, we'll move our thread, putting our needle under one layer of the fabric and coming up to the right side of the hook itself. And we're gonna loop our thread over the hook, not the functional part of the hook, the bar of the hook to hold that in place. And then take one more stitch right underneath. There we go. This keeps the hook from moving around. Now, we'll slide to the other side of the garment and knot our thread off. This isn't as clean as the button. We are gonna see little stitches on the other side and that's okay. We'll be using matching colored thread and so it's gonna look just fine. One knot and taking our needle through a little bit of fabric and a little bit of thread, second knot and hide our tails. Great. Now we're ready to move over to the other side. When we move over to the other side, of course, we're going to knot off our thread again. Same knot every time. Line up the ends, roll, twist, and pull. And we'll cut off any extra and begin from the inside of the garment. The most important thing we want to do is, of course, make sure that the hook and bar line up with each other. And when we see that, we can hold that in place or put a small mark there with a marker, chalk, or pin. Coming from the wrong side of the garment, we're going to loop through twice on each loop, just like we did with the hook. One, two, and gently moving our thumb, replacing our secure hold, and coming up again. One. And two. And that's all we need for the eye. So we'll come to the back and we'll knot off. easier to keep the stitching tight on this one. There we go. And we'll pick up a few threads and knot one and knot two. Perfect. And hide our tails. The hook and eye is a totally critical closure. We use it for everything. The tops of dresses, pants, skirts, and let's test it out, make sure it works. And there it does, perfect. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at our hook and bar. This is a closure usually used for tops of pants or coats. It's uh, for heavier weight fabrics and for high function areas. So again, we're gonna have our four strands of thread on our needle, same needle, same thread, same knot. Make sure that the edge of our hook lines up with either the edge of the pant or garment or wherever the original hook was set. We're gonna come from the wrong side of the garment so we can hide our knot back there, up through one hole and right back down through the other. Very straightforward. And once more, securing that with four threads. Perfect. We want to be aiming to make sure that the stitching is right on top of itself on the underside of the garment. So take a peek and make sure that you're staying in line. Next, we're gonna loop over here to this hole. 
These stitches will look a little big in the back. That's okay. With this hole, we're going to loop the thread on the outside like we did with the hook and eye. Finally, we're gonna take our needle on the bottom over to the final set of holes. As you can see, we're creating a V with our thread and that's all right. We're gonna come up through the fabric and come up through our hole and down again to the other side. I'm gonna move this around so that I can get a better hold on this and come up once more and down once more. Let's flip to the inside of the garment now and loop our thread through our stitch and double knot. Perfect. And we'll loop our tails under and snip that off. And now we have our hook, perfect. So let's loop over to our bar on the other side. Again, we just wanna make sure that we are lining those up and you're welcome to place a pin or make a mark to keep that measurement in place. Now we'll open the garment up so that we can hold that in place. All right, let's re-knot our thread as always. And taking our pin as a measurement and holding that bar in place, let's come up from the wrong side of the garment. Just like the other side, we're gonna do two loops through and then we'll knot it off. We don't want to then bring this thread all the way up and make it one continuous because that's a little messy. We are gonna go ahead and make each of these sides their own stitch. Oop. See how I like to use that needle as a tool? Makes everything easier. All right, we're gonna loop that thread through and just snip it right there. Knot off once more. We can take this pin out because we know we're in the right space now. And then we're just holding that nice and flat and coming up. Can trim off a little bit of that. Good, there we go. And back down and once more. I know that it seems like two times through isn't quite enough, but with the strength of our thread, it keeps it from being bulky, but it does make sure that it's strong. We're gonna pull tight, bring our needle through, and double knot. Perfect. Hide our little tails. And of course, test it. We always wanna make sure it works. Now with this sample, we're gonna fl flip it around to the other side, I think. There we go. Just like it would look in the pant, this bar would be covered by the fabric. All right, good to go.